All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I am going to be reviewing Off Armageddon Reef, book number one in David Weber's Safe Hold series. Now, I got the entire series here in mass market paperback. There's 10 books total in the series. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Got them all in paperback. However, I've also got two of them in hardcover because at various conventions I've been to and various panel writing panels I've set up, I've met David Weber several times and he has... Just flat out, the guy's a nice, one of the nicest guys in the business, just flat out gave me two of his books, book one, Off Armageddon Reef, and book ten, gave them to me at different times and signed them, signed them both. You know, I always show off my signed books. I ain't afraid to show off my signed books. So anyway... I met the guy, you know, I name drop, I name drop when I meet these people and I get to meet a lot of these guys and David Weber is one of the coolest dudes to hang out with. Pensacola Comic Con I think was one of them and I can't remember where else that I've met him and hung out with him at the Bard's Tower bookstore and the convention floor, all the authors get together and we sign books and stuff and then we, a lot of times we go out to, I do remember we went out to a, some sort of really nice restaurant in Pensacola, all the authors together and we sat at a big table anyway. Cool dude, love the guy. You probably saw my Honor Harrington review earlier. We're gonna review the entire Honor Harrington series, and we're gonna review the entire Safe Hold series, starting with book number one, Off Armageddon Reef. I love this. I love this series. In fact, I love it so much. Now that I've got these two, book number one and book number ten sign, I'm gonna get books two through nine in hardcover and uh just so i can have a set so i can have a whole matching set what is it about what are these things about we always review the covers first so let's talk about the covers this is the cover book one it's got the same illustration on it by stephen yule is the illustrator i like these books because not only do all the paperbacks match the spines match. You can tell they're all part of the same series. All the covers look similar. All the covers look have the similar design. And, and even the hardcover, even all the hardcovers, the spines match. So I know we spend a lot of time on this channel talking about graphic design and illustration and how books look really dope when the entire series matches up pretty well together and I know that's another reason I want to get the entire hardcover set is because they all sort of match up really nicely and they're gonna look super fly on my shelf so safe hold series this is this book is the setup for the rest of the series and the setup of this book is fucking dynamite this is this is the kind of sci-fi mashup with fantasy that we all want to read it starts out as space, 100% space opera science fiction, where it's almost as if we're watching Battlestar Galactica. We've got a fleet of starships fleeing from a terrible alien bunch of bad guys that want to destroy and kill all of humanity. And so this, this fleet of starship Starships has the last people in, of humanity on it, much like Battlestar Galactica. You know, they've counted the starships, they've counted the people, and they've got to find a, play, a safe place to call home. Much, you know, the, Battlestar Galactica, if, you, if you've seen that, you know what I'm talking about. They find this planet that looks habitable called Safehold, and they want to put the colony there, but they don't want the bad aliens to find them. So, they concoct this wild plan where what they're going to do is they are going to, everybody agrees to it. We're going to seed this planet with the people from our spaceships, but everybody's mind is going to be wiped. 
because we don't want any technology to exist because technology is what's going to signal to these aliens that we are here and we don't want them of the trillions and trillions of stars of the galaxy they will never find us if we don't have technology pinging off weird shit out into outer space so what they do is they all agree to have their minds wiped except for the 12 captains of the starships they will be sort of the holders of the real history and they will be sort of known as archangels to humanity that has had their minds wiped so they put them on safe hold their minds are wiped except for the 12 captains of the starships and they become sort of like these archangels and they tell people that they are gods and archangels and this and, and but the people's minds are wiped remember so they're like oh my gosh the gods live amongst us there's these 12 gods that live amongst us and they've set up they've agreed to live on this medieval type existence like with castles cathedrals no technology just sword fighting i think they've got gunpowder and cannons but and, and ships pirate ships but that's it that's about all they've got that's the, all the technology that they're going to allow themselves to have. And so they've just wiped all, except for the 12 archangels, they know. And they live amongst the new settlers for about 120 years. And since they, um, because they've got an extended life because of technology and things like that. And not only that, but they do keep a few, they do hide a few in the deep, dark caverns of the mountains they do hide some bits of technology like they've got little um little speeders and little spaceships that they can their little own little personal cruisers that because this is a big world and they want to just be able because they're archangels right they want to be able to whisk themselves all over this planet and surprise people with their sudden appearance oh my gosh this guy was a thousand year a thousand miles away yesterday and oh he's an archangel and then suddenly he's appeared to us well he used a spaceship that he kept and they but they keep them hidden in the mountains and they keep technology hidden in the mountains and they keep it the his the real history of the of the lost fleet of starships hidden for 120 years go by and the archangels slowly die off and but Humanity has lived with the archangels long enough that the myth and legend of these archangels and the and the bunch of religions that have that have so it's a very religious centric society. So they've set up a very non technology religious sect of society. Once all the archangels kind of die off, they've left all of their technology hidden in the deepest, darkest caverns of Mount Doom. Let's just call it, and um, that's where we are. That's how things are set up except one of the archangels actually comes back to life and this is and this is um uh nimu uh, she's sort of a genderless thing she, she decides when she comes back to life to come back as a, a male and call herself merlin so but she's got these she's got superpowers she's got the technology she knows the history she's got the spaceships so we jump ahead like 800 years okay into the future here Nobody remembers the starships. All of humanity is living this feudalistic medieval society. They worship these gods, these 12 archangels. They know their names. They worship them. They build all sorts of religions around them. Technology is forbidden. It's like considered evil. They don't want to go any further than the, the cannons and the ships that they've got. And But then this Merlin, who has reemerged, sort of comes out of hiding and decides to help one of the, it's like a Game of Thrones type medieval society where everybody's sort of vying for the, the throne, right? And um, so he decides, Merlin decides he's going to come back and help um, Caleb and his aristocratic family because they are also vying for power amongst this land. And, and like I said, this is a big land. This is the entire, this is one of the things we do as we talk about the maps. That's a map of the entire world. So you can see it's got, it's huge. It's like the size of our planet, right? And it's got all sorts of people living on it now. Every, all, every, all the continents are full of people, warring people. And anyway, one of these archangels is revived, comes back and decides to help young prince caleb and his family and 
Merlin has got supernatural powers, it seems, because he's got this technology. He's got the spaceship that he can fly back and forth, and he's got, like, super tech that makes him stronger, makes him faster, makes him all this. So he's like a superhero, which is perfect, because he comes back and he says, he literally says, I am one of the archangels returned. And so Caleb and his family are like, oh my gosh, the archangels, the gods have bestowed upon us this, this miracle, this the archangel has returned to us. We are the chosen ones, right? And so, so, um, and that's cool. Ten books of, now we have ten books of Game of Thrones type medieval political maneuvering. And it's just great. And we just tap into the beginning of it in this book where we've got all these political maneuverings and we've got this superhero guy in the middle of it named Merlin who, who knows the secret that the, of the starships and the, and the evil aliens that want to kill humanity. And, he, and, but he, and he's got these powers. And he's got... And the thing is, is he starts to help Caleb and his family win the wars because he's got, um, he's got tech. He, can, he, he, he flies around and he bugs. He puts, little, he puts little bugs like in all of the other castles so, they can hear, so he can hear the, all, the politic, all the maneuverings and all the battle plans. And so then he can feed that information to Caleb. And Caleb can always seem to outsmart the en enemy because he's got Merlin, the archangel, on his side. But it's all done through tech. And, but they all believe he's an archangel. And now what's cool about this whole series is that's the setup of the series. And I won't get into anything more, but we're going to read them one by one. But, um, but then they go through battle after battle after battle after battle, different factions trying to gain power. And, and all the time, this threat of an alien species just might come and wipe everybody out at the same, just at any moment, right? And Merlin is... is, is he, he actually starts to tell, and this is where, this is what I love about this series, is Merlin slowly starts to clue people in on the fact that maybe their religions are bullshit. Maybe their religions aren't real. Maybe, maybe he's not really an archangel. Maybe he is something other than he seems. And people, and, and people starting to like, uh, you know, it's just so full of great, juicy Game of Thrones type medieval action and intrigue and backstabbing and pirates pirate ships cannons it really it, this it re, kind of reminds me of just an extended huge science fiction version of war and peace it, it really does i mean that's the closest thing i can compare it to you know that about the tech about the technology they have in these books is it would it be about what was there in War and Peace in the Napoleonic Age. Um, so, I mean, it's just fantastic. This this book, this book series gripped me from book one. I've read all of them once. We're going to do a reread for the channel, and we're going to reread them all, and we're going to review them all, because they just get more dope and more dope as they go, and things just spiral out of control and out of control. And Merlin and his all of his knowledge and how he slowly imparts the knowledge to different people, and, you know, some people start to find out Hey, maybe there's something out of space in outer space. Maybe, you know, and you, it's just intriguing. I just think it's one of the best ideas for a series of novels that I've ever come across. And I absolutely am delighted in these books. I absolutely loved them. I give this a 10 out of 10. It is a great, great fantasy book that actually starts out as a pretty good space opera.